everyone, and this is my prediction show for the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view that is happening Sunday. Uh, it seems as if they've announced all the matches. I think this is being filmed on Friday, and the show is, of course, on Sunday. But it looks like they've announced all the matches, so I'm going to go through and kind of try to predict the try to predict the show though this one going into wrestlemania might be a little bit more predictable than what most people think but we'll see where they go with it we can always see where they go with everything uh first up is the kickoff show match with uh mojo raleigh this was just announced uh, mojo Ra uh yeah uh mojo raleigh going up against kurt hawkins and i i can't see them not going with Mojo here. I mean, they haven't done much of anything with Kurt Hawkins at all outside of him just being pretty much a jobber since coming in. Um, and yeah, I, I would have to imagine that they're going to go with Mojo Raleigh here. They they were uh, kind of building him up with the Hype Bros tag team, but now they kind of are... Well, they're not really using him all that much right now outside of a couple of weeks here and there, but uh, I would assume they're going to try to build him up as a single star here in the very near future so i'm going to assume that they're going to go with mojo raleigh here uh so the next match to go through or at least the next match that they showed on the card was apollo cruz and kalisto in a handicap match against Dolph ziggler oh my god this this is a match where no one wins this is like in in the terms of like your star power this is a match where no one wins at all um because if the faces win this one uh, they, they just essentially beat down one guy. And, uh, and of course, if Ziggler ends up winning, winning the match, uh, it basically buries Apollo Crews and Kalisto. Um, I, I think like the only saving grace that they'll probably have in this entire match is, uh, Ziggler going over. Uh, I'm going to predict Ziggler going over, but he's going to go over in dubious means. He has to go over in dubious means so it doesn't essentially say, oh, Kalisto and Apollo Crews are literally, literally the jobber squad at, at this point, uh, which is probably how they truly treat them at, the, at, at this time. But uh, hopefully that's not going to actually be the case of what they decide to go with. Um but I am definitely going with Dolph Ziggler in this match, and I am assuming he's going to go over with dubious means uh, to make them not so weak uh, for uh, for down the road. Uh, so we'll see how everything goes off in that match. Um, up next is Becky Lynch going up against Mickey James. Honestly, you can go either way here. You truly could go either way, but the thing that I'm I'm kind of wondering what they're going to go for. And uh, in any way, shape, or form here, they really have, outside of like getting one over on Becky Lynch go, uh, and costing her the SmackDown Women's title and everything in that sense, they really haven't put Mickie James over. And since it's a three-year contract that she is on right now, and I'm assuming it's to be a performer, I would assume her first one-on-one -on -one match back, they're going to put her over. They're going to put over Mickie James here, and that's who I'm going to go with. Um... It, you know, Becky's kind of had her, um, she had a shorter run with the title than mo I think most people would have expected, but I don't feel like it hurts her all that much to lose to a veteran in some way. And again, uh, if they really want to go with it, uh, though I would assume that they would probably go with a clean victory in this one, they could go with a dubious means way, that, in, in a way to try to protect Becky Lynch or something in that sense uh, de uh, for down the road. But with the factor of this being their first one-on-one -on -one match and maybe they continue on this feud further on, I'm assuming they're going to go with Mickie James here. And considering where they're probably going to go with some of these other matches, I wouldn't be shocked if they decided to um, uh, have some heels go over in these cases. Uh, up next to talk about is the tag team turmoil match the uh, for the SmackDown tag team titles. So this is going to encompass the champions, the American Alpha, uh, the Ascension, uh, let's see here, the Usos, Von Villains, Heath Slater and Rhino, and I am missing a team here. I am missing a team and Breeze Dango and Breeze Dango. So I'm going to try to go through this one. Uh, through this one. Um, so, uh, so the tag team turmoil match. And you, you, 
I think some people know how it goes. Two teams start. Once there's a pinfall, um, the next team comes out until all the teams are going to be out there. Um, honestly, there are some people that are thinking that this is going to be like a, uh, a chance for a surprise or maybe a surprise call-up or anything in that sense. I don't think the Revival is showing up in this one uh, in any way. It, the only thing that they could go with with a surprise is that they are going to go uh, take the tag team titles off American Alpha. I, I don't think they're going to do it. I don't know what they have planned for the tag t- those tag team titles going into WrestleMania, or at least I don't have a my own clue and whatever I've read doesn't really talk about that all that much um but uh i don't think they're going to take them off american alpha here uh they've kind of had those titles jump multiple times now since they've been going in there though when it comes to tag team titles that that is the title that usually changes more often than most of the other titles in the company uh but i don't think they're going to do it here they're going to give a little bit more time to the american alpha with those tag team titles and they're going to try to put them over a little bit more they're going to put them over in this match i don't know where they're going to have them come out um Hopefully it's not like the all the champions just come out last or something in that sense. I would like to see them have a chance at uh, having to go through multiple teams. Uh, not like, oh, they have to start from the beginning and go all the way to the end. But I mean, like, go through multiple teams and have a bit of a struggle trying to, you know, keep those tag team titles. Uh, I think it might put them over a little bit better. And it would be a nice way of, do- a nice way of doing it. Uh, knowing our luck... All the other teams would be out there, and American Alpha comes out last, and they just win the match that way, uh, which really wouldn't put them over as baby faces at that time. Uh, like I said, m- having them go through multiple teams would probably be the better route, but we'll see where they decide to go with that particular match. This one could, that match itself could be interesting just to see how they decide to have everybody come out. Um, up next is Nikki Bella going up against Natalia. You know. I'm just going to go with Nikki Bella on this one. I really am. Uh, Mainly because uh, I I feel like they're going to have the heels probably go over more in the women's matches. You can get three of them on the show. Uh, And this will be that one spot where they probably have a face go over. And, you know, if rumors are true, they're going to probably try to have uh, Nikki Bella get put over a little bit more going to WrestleMania in the cer- in the terms of her going out of the company for a little while or taking time off after WrestleMania. So they'll probably build her going into WrestleMania here. I'm uh, I would I would say to build Natalia more as a heel threat, she should go over Nikki Bella here, but I feel like the company's probably going to put over Nikki Bella in this match. So that's who I'm going to go with. Um Um, Next is Luke Harper going up against Randy Orton. You know, I I wanted to say this is a foregone conclusion. I really did. But I wouldn't be shocked if they put Luke Harper over in this match. In some way, shape, or form. Just to have him build a little bit more. um, In in some way. But uh, in my thought process at this time, I feel like they're going to put over Orton in the sense of him being the Rumble winner and everything in the, on that side. Uh, this one should be at least a fun match. Uh, we did see it a few weeks back, but uh, yeah, I feel like they could do, uh, I feel like they could do the uh, aspect of Orton going over, uh, or they will go with the aspect of Orton going over in this particular match just to keep his momentum going going into WrestleMania. But I wouldn't be shocked as well if they put Luke Harper over by some uh, crazy way, maybe make it feel like uh, Orton's vulnerable going into WrestleMania as well. But I feel like they'll put or- Orton over in this particular match. Uh, up next is the SmackDown Women's title match with Naomi and Alexa Bliss. Um... I don't feel like this is a... The way they've been building up this match is like Naomi trying to win the women's title and going into her hometown during WrestleMania weekend or for WrestleMania with the title, I, which makes me feel like they're going to put Alexa Bliss over. I feel like she's going to get a decent decent length of a title run uh, before someone actually takes it off of her or somebody, you know, or they're saving that title change for WrestleMania or something in that sense 
and we'll see where they decide to go every uh, whichever way. But I feel like they're going to go with Alexa Bliss on this particular match uh, in here. No real other reason other than um, you don't want the title switching hands too often right now, but since it's one of the newer uh, since it's one of the newer titles. I know they did that a good chunk of the time with the Raw side with Sasha Banks and Charlotte, but at least the story was kind of those two fighting over the title and that both of them were equals and one just really couldn't get the advantage over the other uh, at that time. Um, so I feel like they will put Alexa Bliss over in this particular match. Um, th so this leads into the main event. The Elimination Chamber match. The Miz, Dean Ambrose, Baron Corbin, uh, Bray Wyatt, uh, AJ Styles, and John Cena. Um, hmm. They could go many ways with this one. I don't feel like they're going to have Cena go over in this match. I'm going to eliminate him as uh, as my pick. Uh, I don't feel like they're going to put him over in this match. O on the aspect that we have seen now, Randy Orton versus Cena on TV before WrestleMania. So that they're not going to make that that match. Um, Corbin would be too soon. I feel like it would be too soon for Corbin, though I could see him with that title at some point in time in the next year. Uh, with the way that they've been building them. Uh, a nice little swerve would be The Miz uh, and having him come out with a title. But I don't think they're going to go with that. I think they have other plans for The Miz with uh, WrestleMania I feel, because there's the rumor tag match with uh, him and Maurice going up against Cena and Nikki Bella. So I don't feel like he's going to win. Um... Dean Ambrose has the Intercontinental title. I don't think they're going to do that aspect of it, and they might have, and they might use this match as a catalyst to build his Intercontinental title match at WrestleMania as well. So that kind of leaves two people. The betting odds, which is probably going to be my actual pick here, is going to be my actual pick. Uh, the betting odds is going to be Bray Wyatt, and Bray Wyatt's going to be my actual pick to win this one. Pipe dream though. And, ho and this is mainly to get him out of a potential match with Shane McMahon at WrestleMania, would be AJ Styles. Pipe Dream would be AJ Styles, so you can get AJ Styles versus Randy Orton at WrestleMania. But I feel like they're going to uh, weave this aspect of the Wyatt family feud into the WWE title match and... It's kind of where it looks like it's going at this point. Uh, I mean, Orton's the Rumble winner, and more than likely they're going to fast track this uh, this feud to having it be Orton versus Bray at the pay per view. And the only way to do that, unless they're going to come up with another way to get rid of his um, to get rid of his WrestleMania title match at that time, would be to put the title on Bray Wyatt. So, I mean, that's just the logical conclusion. And I feel like, I feel like other people are trying to go out on a limb. Like I said, Pipe Dream for me, second pick, though not going to be the official pick. And the one that I would be really happy with is if AJ Styles wins it. And all of a sudden you get a match with him and Randy Orton. I feel like they could put on a really good match with each other. Uh, then again, I feel like AJ Styles could put on a good match with just about anybody on that roster. Um, but my pick will be Bray Wyatt going out of the Elimination Chamber, going out with a title. And they go on into WrestleMania to set up uh, this whole aspect of the Wyatt collapse uh, in some way, shape, or form. So, um, yeah, that's all the matches. Uh, eight matches on the show. It's out here in Phoenix where I live. I'm at this point not going to the show. I don't know yet. Um, have to talk to a couple buddies. It's going to be like literally a last minute thing if we decide to go <laughs> at that point. Um, and there's a small chance that I might go on my own, but I don't know. I don't know at that point. Uh, I don't know at that time uh, whether or not I really want to go to a show by myself. Uh, but look forward to me at least doing live reactions here on the channel if I decide not to go to the show. And then we'll uh, do a review for the show as well afterwards uh, to go along with everything. So that is my picks for the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Uh, uh, the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. I thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a great day.